So this session we're talking about formulating a research question. Um, again, my name is Lenore Lada and Jody Salter too can offer kind of ideas as we, uh, as we go through this. Uh, but the idea of talking about this is to, is to get you started thinking now, especially if you're in the early stages, to get started thinking about your research question. So really at any point along the way, whether you're you know, getting close to finishing, whether you're right at the beginning, you should be thinking about a research question if you haven't already. Um, and Joanna mentioned kind of if you have, you know, oh, the way of getting started is to just get started, like do something. And so what we'll talk about in terms of the research question is a way that you can start your, your brain thinking about your project, thinking about some aspects of your project. Um, and you do a little bit of writing to do with that and then you feel like you've actually, you've accomplished something, you've written a little bit about it. So the research question, um, you want to use it all the way along. So what is a research question and why is it important? Um, those are things that, uh, that we want to, to talk about. What do you know of a research question? How many have at this point um, already thought of something in terms of a research question to do with your project? How many feel that they've thought in terms of a question. So I'm seeing about four or five. Um, the research question is something that you need to think about at the beginning and it may change a lot as you go along. So just because you think of something as a research question at the beginning of your project doesn't mean that's going to be exactly the question that you either end up answering or even end up trying to answer as you go later on. But it's a good idea to have that, uh, have that started. So what do you think a research question is? What would you say would be a definition of a research question? Okay, those who already feel they have one, yeah? The problem you want to solve or trying to, that's from an engineering perspective. Okay. Yeah, so from an engineering perspective, the problem that you're trying to solve, that you want to solve. Okay, so that's one way to look at it. What are some other thoughts? Yeah. What is the real objective of the research? Okay. What's, what will be the outcome? Okay, so the real objective of the research, what outcome are you hoping to aim for? And what is the question that will, what, that will allow you to create your, your plan for your work, create the project and the, and the experiments that are going to help you get there? Okay, so if thinking of it in terms of a question means that you're going to be looking for an answer. And it's important because without a question, you really just have a bunch of experiments and maybe they produce something, maybe they didn't. So you really want to have a specific question and what you're going to answer. And as I said, it can vary. So components as you work through, oh yeah, the, the laser pointer for some reason works nicely on the whiteboard on either side, does not work on the actual screen. Um, so you start with a topic area, a broad topic area, maybe it's you know because of your advisor works in a certain area, whatever, so you start with a broad topic area. Um, you start to identify that there's some problems or issues you know, happening in that area. Then you get down to your actual research question. So what specific question in terms of that broader problem area do you want to try to focus on in your work? And then the thesis answers your research question. So the experiments you do, the results you get, those should ideally answer your research question. Um, so all the way along, all the, way along the process, uh, topic, problem, issue, research, question, and answer. That's where the research question comes from. And then as you write your thesis, that research question is going to be relevant and be important in all the parts of your thesis. So in the introduction, you're going to lead the reader to understand why the research question is important and what that research question is. As you go through the materials and methods, you're going to explain why your methods are going to help you to answer that research question. Uh, the results that you give are going to be providing answers to the research question. And then when you get to the discussion, you're going to be discussing you know, how well it answered the research question, uh, why it did, why it didn't, um, what are some other things that you have to consider. So all the way along, that research question has to be refined and um, you know, thought about so that you can make sure to answer it within your, within your thesis. So you, some people end up with a main research question, you know, one research question, um, but they may also have some subsidiary research, some subsidiary, subsidiary research questions. So as you try to divide your project up, you know, you realize that okay, in order to answer this big main question, I've got to come up with these other questions. Jody. I was just going to say, when you're at the beginning stage, you might actually start with subsidiary research questions. So you might have a bunch of questions that you're interested in. And you may not know which is main yet. 
And that's where having to do your literature review and finding out who's done what, who said what, who's discovered what, what hasn't been discussed, that helps you refine or potentially answer some of your subsidiary questions and then refine and focus on what's the main question. Because until I know what the field is, my focus field and who's done what, and where does my research fit in, it can be difficult for me to determine what is my main question. I don't know enough yet. So having subsidiary questions sometimes to start can be very useful to help me gather my research and, and organize my thought process. Good, thank you. Um, so the different questions, as, as I said, depending on the project, uh, you may be able to differentiate the questions into main and secondary categories. These second order questions might help you to answer the research question, or as Jody said, they might be preliminary questions that need to be answered by doing reading uh, in order to get there. Um, you can order the questions then as you go along to sort of figure out the priority, uh, the significance to the project. And these questions, the secondary questions, as well as the components of the main one, help you to figure out, okay, what do I need to look up? What do I need to research and read about? Um, what do I need to include in the lit review sections? Uh, how do I want to organize the writing into the chapters? Maybe because each chapter or each section uh, does answer one of those and discuss one of those secondary questions. So the idea of breaking it into chunks uh, helps you then in that structure as you get to the, the, the thesis part as well as the lit review part. So very important to have that idea of a research question in mind as you go along. So a research question, uh, so one example, and we're going to look at, we're going to give you a few minutes to start thinking about your research question. So Jody's going to hand out a uh, worksheet. So this example is from a, a thesis in OVC, uh, wasn't mine. Um, the topic, area. So when you start, when we say you start with topic, problem, and then your research question, the topic area is that broader topic area that you're just, maybe if you're at the beginning, you're just kind of aware of what your advisor's you know, work relates to, and so that's the broader topic area that you're looking at. But you want to start there in order to then start to figure out, well, what am I interested in as a part of that research question? Uh, topics can come from sort of a variety of, of places. You know, you might have been assigned the topic by your advisor specifically already. Uh, you might be told you can, you can start thinking about topic areas. Um, where, where are some places that topics can come from? Where are, so where, how, what would make you think about some areas of interest within, within the broader field? Yeah? For me, from my place of work. Okay. Okay, yeah, so from a specific experience, so from a place of work was the answer. Uh, so from a specific experience, could be work experience, could be classroom experience, but something that made you think, okay, there's a problem here, there's something that needs to be looked at. You know, again, which sort of small part of that can I look at in order to, to provide some insight into the bigger problem area? Where else, what, what helped you think about topic? Track, but if you're looking into literature or experiencing like a gap in the knowledge, like there's something you want to fill in to answer a question. Okay, so looking at literature, seeing a gap in the knowledge, that's something that you want to fill in. So you might see it from reading articles then, that kind of idea. So you read and the articles pointed out that, oh, this, here's a gap, more research needs to be done here. And so you can think to yourself, oh, maybe I could do some research in, in that area. Uh, where else? Yeah? Uh, any future plans you have opening a business and you have an idea and you want to Okay, all right. So the idea of opening a business, something in the future. So something you plan to do and you realize that you need to do, you know, there's some questions that need to be answered in order to figure out the best way to do that or some problem that already exists. Yeah? Mine's a little bit different. It's more asking somebody who's not related to you, you know, so they could kind of kick in stuff as simple as, hey, we thought about this. You know what I mean? Okay, so talking to someone who's not related to your field, you're saying? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so a, a lay person or somebody that you've talked to who just said, oh, why don't we know more about this? Or, you know, why haven't they figured out a way to solve this? Or something like that. Uh, yeah, so yeah, just conversations with people could make you go, well, that is a good question. Um, so those can all give you sort of an idea, again, of that, of that broader topic area. Um, or, as I said, it may be just what your advisor is working in and you're working with that advisor and so that's the, the topic area that you're working in. But you need to find your, your smaller one. 
So this example of a topic is digestive changes that result from early weaning in piglets. So that's a broader topic area. There's lots of things that could be looked at in terms of, of digestive changes, what kinds of digestive changes, uh, what about early weaning, what, you know, what sorts of things are they looking at, is it you know, physiology, is it chemistry, is it genetics, etc. So a broad topic area that gives the person a start to how they want to, how they want to think about their, their topic. So in the worksheet, looking at number one, um, you've got a box on the first page at the top. And it asks you to just write down an idea of what your topic or area of research is. So if you have a research question already, don't, don't start with that. Start broader. So step back from the project area and think about, OK, so what, what's the aspect of the field that I'm in? Uh, what is the broader area? If you were going to meet someone in an elevator, and they said, oh, what are you working on? You wouldn't immediately go to the narrow, focused project. You would have to lead them in by telling them what the broader topic area is. So write down a sentence or two that helps you to distinguish what that is. So a couple of examples here. You know, my research topic is the permeability barrier in dolphin skin, so the broader sort of area. Or from an arts or, or humanities, my research topic is the effectiveness of writing centers at helping university students improve their writing. So not as narrowed as the actual specific research question, but giving a broad topic area. I was going to say one way to think about it is if you wanted me to find your research paper on Google, what keywords or key phrases would I put in to pull up your paper? Yeah. And that can help you think about your broad topic. Yeah. So take a minute now to jot down a sentence or two that helps to describe it to that person in the elevator, to Jody asking you what your topic area is, uh, et cetera. And again, if you're at a really early stages, just give the, the ideas that you have. What is your advisor working on? What would you like to be working in? Uh, just something to work with as we go through. And then this kind of worksheet you can use later on in the process to help you um, refine things and go back to thinking about it. OK, so from there, you want to think about then, so what's the problem area? So your topic area is x. but why do we care about it? What is the, the issue or the problem or the situation that's happening that means that people want to do research in it? If it's something where you say, well, no, there's not really a problem. It's just uh, an interesting area. If there's no problem, then there's no research to be done. So you need to figure out what is the problem within that area. So there's different ways you can think about how your, how your topic is associated with a problem. Uh, so you might be looking at, you know, could I do some exploration? Is there some exploration needed in that topic area? Like, is something happening? Is there an association between this and this? Is there, you know, a problem that results from this happening? Um, and maybe there is or isn't, but that's something that could be researched. Description, so maybe looking at what is happening. We do know that something happens when you, you know, combine certain, certain aspects and you want to look at what is happening when that, when that goes on. Uh, third one, understanding or analysis or explanatory. So maybe a bit more analytical. We know what, we know that something's happening. Uh, you want to know why it happens or how it happens. So some actual sort of looking at processes or, or mechanisms. Um, and then another area is prediction. So what is likely to happen? So maybe we know what happens in certain situations. You have an interest in seeing, well, what happens? How can it be applied to other areas? Or what happens when you change the conditions? So those, you may find that you're doing a little bit of a few of them. You may focus on one area. Um, but that gives you an idea of kind of thinking about, OK, so what, what do we need to know about that, that topic area and that problem? So finding the problems too, you think, you're thinking about what is unresolved. Okay, so that's the gap that was mentioned. Uh, something that hasn't been done, something that hasn't been figured out. Because again, if it's all been figured out, you know, probably no need for your, for your project. Uh, so you may find that the research focuses only on causes, but not on the effects. So that's an area that you could look at. Or only on effects, not on causes. Uh, you might find that there have been previous models for how something works, but there's some inaccuracies, so you could be looking at creating a, a new or revised model that helps. Uh, the scope of the problem is unknown, so we know that it works in you know, a certain way in certain species or processes or mechanisms or tissues. You want to find out whether it also happens in those others. Uh, required conditions are unknown for that problem to occur. Uh, do, the con do other conditions result in the same problem, or you know, what is the sort of combination of things? Uh, prevention or solution for the problem is unknown. So we know there's a problem, we don't know what prevents it from happening, 
or we don't know how to solve it once it does happen. So those are all kinds of questions or approaches that you could apply to your topic and just sort of thinking of, okay, so what are some of the things that, that we need to know about it? And it may be very obvious, you know, which are the problem areas that you want to focus on. Other times you may have a few ideas. You might think, oh, I could do this, or I could do that, or I could do this. So different options to think about. Your problem sentence might begin with then identifying that gap. So the research is incomplete in assessing X. Uh, there's disagreement in the field about, you know, how this happens, why this happens, when this happens, you know, to what it happens to, or sorry, to what it happens. Uh, researchers are undecided about whether or what or why or how. So those are, again, ways that you can just sort of look at, look at searching for your, your problem area, searching for and then starting to narrow down to what you want to do. So in this example with the piglets, uh, the topic was digestive changes that result from early weaning in pig, piglets. The problem or issue is that researchers are undecided about how early weaning in piglets affects the non-immune protective capacity of the intestine. So narrow down then a little bit from digestive changes to non-immune protective capacity. So they've started to think about you know, what area they're really interested in. So still piglets, early weaning, um, but narrow down to a certain area where there's a, where there's a gap. So taking a look at your worksheet, uh, number two, the research problem, then asks you to uh, look at sort of two components. So for A, we do, we've identified it as sort of what, what don't we know? So what is unknown or unresolved? Uh, the example, there's an example about dolphins, and that was from, that was from my thesis. Um, so the problem that needs to be resolved is the skin of dolphins in captivity tends to slough off when dolphins are maintained in fresh water. It's unknown whether dolphin skin uses the same mechanisms as the skin of land mammals to provide a permeability barrier against water and why those mechanisms are unable to provide a sufficient barrier against water, uh, fresh water. So that's what's not known. And then again, on your worksheet, there's an example for the, uh, for the arts, the, the writing center's example. Um, and it's usually writing center effectiveness is measured in terms of the number of visitors to the center, not in terms of actual student outcomes. We don't know the best way of measuring whether and how writing centers help students improve their writing. So that's the problem. That's what's unknown or unresolved. And then for B, why is your research problem a problem? So why do we care about that? So that's kind of a second component to, you know, we don't know this, but the next thing someone in the elevator is going to say is, why do we care? Why does it matter? So B is then why does it matter? So for the dolphins, without knowledge of the mechanisms used by dolphins to protect against fresh water, scientists can't understand how or whether they're able to protect themselves against other harmful elements within the water, such as oil or chemicals. So there's, you know, there may be then sort of a broader scope or, or implications or applications or significance to that, to that problem. Um, there's a certain narrowed area, but you're hoping that it will shed some light on something else. So that's kind of the, the aim. So take a quick look back at your research topic and then move on and try to identify then sort of the A and the B of your research area. So the, identifying the problem and thinking about what is unknown in that topic area and why does it matter. Okay, so I'll give you a couple minutes to do that um, and I'll get you to share a little bit with, uh, with someone beside you. But take two minutes to write as much as you can and again if you're in early stages, you know, uh, to the best of your ability, kind of write down what you are aware of at this point is the problem area or a problem area that you might look at. Okay, so a couple minutes for that. Yeah. So yeah, we'll put the uh, worksheet up on course link two after this so that you can access it. Um, and I'll put it up just as a Word document so that you can, you know, as I say, as you, as you revise and sort of carry on through that you're able to keep going back to this and thinking and refining. All right, so if you've got some ideas written down there, what I'd like you to do now is to, to share with somebody. So in pairs, um, and we'll look at so pairs or threes, um, you're gonna share your research topic. So each person will go through the process of, okay, what's your topic and then what's your problem and, and why does it matter? Um, and then ask each other questions. So present to the other person, again, as though you're in an elevator, they've asked you what you do, what your area is, so you start with your broader area. You're not gonna start with your, again, with your very specific, you know, um, focused area because they won't understand the context. So you're gonna start with that topic area that you've identified, 
uh, identify what the problem is so they understand why work needs to be done. And then any questions that they have, they can then take a minute or two to ask you then. Okay, so what do you mean by that? Or, or why, I still don't get why it's important. Or you know, what is the field exactly? If you've started to focus an area, they may not really understand the full um, broad area. Okay, so as you, as you shared your topic and your problem with somebody else, so as you went through that process of sharing your ideas, um, did, did the other person have any questions for you that were, were useful? Were you, what happened in that questioning process? Did anybody get to any stage where you realized that you'd started in too quickly to that topic, the person needed a little bit more lead in? Yeah? Yeah, I think at first when I started explaining it to you, uh, you didn't get really some of the terms I was using. So yeah. I actually pulled up YouTube and showed him some videos. Of okay, videos, all right. So. So yeah, it's that idea of, of, well, maybe I have to, okay, I'll, let me start, you know, back a little bit, you know, so it's that idea, if you start in too, too close to your refined question and your specific project, they're going to go, I don't know even what context, I don't even know what area you're talking about. So what we're looking at in terms of topic, problem, and then question is the structure of what part of your, what part of your thesis does this sort of sound like? Any thoughts? Identify, introducing the topic, you know, describing the problem and the gap, and then your research question. What section does that sound like in a, in a thesis or a research paper? Introduction, yeah. So this is how you introduce, and this is why you introduce the topic this way in your thesis, is you're trying to say this is the broad area, these are the problems and, and issues, and down to sort of the, the narrow one, and then so this is what I'm going to do. But if you start with this is what I'm going to do, the person has no idea of, of why or what context or you know what what would what how will that help what will that do so introducing bringing them into that and the more you get used to that idea of progressing through describing it the more comfortable you'll be with talking about your research you know to anyone to your advisor to committee members um, you know to your mother to your you know to the to the friend in the, at the coffee shop um, and you'll get more aware and even just perceptive for yourself about why am I really doing this? What are the important issues? Okay, rather than just focusing on that narrowed question. Okay, Jody. Um, I'd like to just offer a strategy um, because talking about your research for some of you might be very easy. Some of you it might be very difficult. And so for me, I could write, 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 but to sit in front of my supervisor and actually have to talk about it and not get nervous was very difficult. So one of the things that I did as a practice and what actually proved to be really useful for organizing my thought pattern was I took a voice recorder and I'd go for walks. So for those of you who maybe commute or you have a dog, you have to walk, um, or who just like to walk. Talk to yourself. Oh, I used to talk to my dog too, and then you'd come around the corner and you'd be like, oh, hi. <laughs> but, so what I would do was I would take my voice recorder, or if you have a cell phone that has a voice recorder on it, and I would ask myself questions. Why is my research significant? And then I would talk, blah, 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 blah. And nobody else ever heard it, so it could be ridiculous. And it would jump here, and then, oh, yeah, I maybe should talk about this. And in the process, I would help structure my thought. Because when we write, we just write. Dump. When I have to communicate to you, I actually have to logically order my thinking so you can follow my thought pattern. So in the process of articulating our own research, we do that invariably. We organize our thought process so that it makes logical sense. So then after I had gone for my walk with my dog and would go home, I had already done a bit of structuring and it made it easier for me then to sit down and write. And I never actually really listened to my tapes again, but it had helped me get it out and then structure my thoughts. So one thought for you is just to try that. Record yourself. And it can be really awkward at first, but mm -hmm. nobody else is going to hear it. So mm -hmm. there you yeah. go. It's a good strategy. How, how many found it a new experience to actually do what you just did and kind of share your research from the beginning? Did anybody find it a new experience? A couple? OK. So if you haven't ever done it, you know, find someone that you can, that you can share with. Yeah? Um, well, it just made me think. Um, 
Like I find speaking to somebody else um, really helps me to solidify mm -hmm. what's going on in my head. Or because we're going through something that's rap learning at a very, very rapid pace, right. to actually have a conversation afterwards um, actually helps to understand in your own mind what it is you're learning via somebody else because then they start asking questions and then you have to mm -hmm. respond. Um, we were in residence just not too long ago. We had to come up with an idea for a business and we had to pitch it. And we had to sit along a table of five people and we had two minutes and we had to pitch the idea. Speed dating. Like speed dating. Mm. Every two minutes. And by the fifth person, we were so clear mm -hmm. on the idea that we had. The first person was very like, uh, I don't know what I'm talking about. Because <laughs> we had to come up with the idea very fast. Right. But then as we moved along, it really started to clarify. And mm -hmm. by the end, we felt completely comfortable talking about what our idea was. Right, it's good. So, and that's, yeah, that idea of that tape recorder, the more you say it, so if you can find a, a human, you know, target that, that will sit down and listen to you, you know, mm -hmm. sit down at a coffee shop with someone and go, can I just talk to you for two minutes, you know? Um, <laughs> <laughs> they may think you're crazy, but you could, you could try it. Um, that would be a new experience. Yeah, it will be a new experience, that's right. And it doesn't have to be someone in your field. You may think, well, I don't really know the people in my lab, or they're all busy, but in fact, it might be better if they're not in your field, because then some of the things you start to say it and they'll go, wait a sec, what, what does that have to do with? And so then you realize, okay, no, I need to start back and, and bring things in that way. Um, so find, find someone to talk to, and, and it's only a two minute, three minute conversation, uh, but it helps you to just sort of work through, work through those things. Okay, anything else happened while you were sharing? Anything else you'd like to, to bring forward that happened during that experience? Anything else? No? Okay. So, any, well, there was one more. Make note of any questions that might be relevant. Okay, so if they did, someone did ask you a question or they helped you to clarify, do you add that to your notes, you know, when you have a minute today and, and just say, okay, I need to think about why this is. Especially if they asked you a question, you said, oh, I don't really know why we're looking at that or why that's relevant to that. So make note of those. So asking questions, so on the other side of your sheet, um, and did everybody get a second side? We just had one that was sort of done as two separate sheets, but does everybody have a second side? Okay. Uh, so on the second side, there's a box for asking questions. And so this is that idea of, okay, what are all the different things that maybe now that you've thought about the topic and the problem, what are all the different things that you have questions about. So you might find these out by researching, by you realize, okay, I gotta look up some articles, and um, as Jody said, in the lit review, and in, in the process of the lit review, what are some things that are still out there that I don't know about uh, that I need to clarify? Uh, some of them might be ideas for research projects that you could do, but as you do your literature search, maybe you find out they have already been done. But this is where you can collect some ideas about what are some things that I'm curious about now in terms of that topic area and problem area that you just focused on on the previous side. So I'll get you to take, so these are some examples just from the dolphin skin uh, where you might say, okay, well who else has looked at dolphin skin? How does the lamellar granule in this, so this organelle in the skin of land mammals work to form a permeability barrier? What other components contribute to protection in the skin of other mammals and therefore may contribute to protection in dolphins? Does the presence of chlorine in freshwater contribute to the problem? Uh, when does freshwater begin to cause sloughing of skin? You know, so it's just a variety of sort of questions. So think about you know, who's and what's and when's and where's and why's that you may want to know about your question and how's. Uh, so take a minute to, f to brainstorm into that box and just write down as many questions as you can within uh, the two minutes that I'll give you to do that. And again, it could be broad, narrow, just any range of questions that come up after your discussion with that uh, previous person about your topic and the problem area. Okay, so take a couple minutes now to do that. Okay, so I'll get you to, to pause there. And again, this worksheet is something you can take. You can work on it at lunchtime if you want to sort of go further from there. Uh, we'll just finish off the, the sort of thoughts about it. So in this piglet example that we were looking at, the research question or a potential research question that this person came up with is, do the physiological changes in the small intestine as a result of early weaning in piglets adversely affect the functional expression of the major apical membrane enzymes? So they've come from digestive changes resulting from early weaning in piglets to the specific things they want to look at. You know, so functional expression of certain 
enzymes, uh, physiological changes in the small intestine. So we've got an idea then of a specific question um, and somebody else could then look at another area of that to get at the same sort of problem or issue. But this is one project that, that this one person is going to look at. So that's a potential research question. And in terms of then from there, so even when you get this draft research question on the worksheet, um, some ways that you can think about do I really have or have I approached it the way I need to and do I have all the information that I can include. So a couple of ways to think further about refining it. One is an uh, acronym PICO. So population intervention comparisons outcomes. So think in terms of could you or have you identified the population that you're going to look at in your major research question? Is that, is that clearly stated um, or do you need to think about it further? You know, are you looking at dogs? Are you looking at a specific breed of dogs? Are you looking at a specific age of dogs, etc.? So narrowing down the population. The intervention. So what are you going to be doing? What, what is your experiment going to include? And can you address that in your major, major research question? Can you sort of indicate the type of experimental uh, manipulation you're going to be doing? Uh, comparisons. Are you going to compare a certain, you know, one breed of animal to another, one species to another, uh, one age group to another? Is there some kind of comparative aspect of it or not? And again, indicate that in your research question. And the outcome. So what, it, would it be clear from the major research question what kind of answers you're looking for? What kind of um, results or how you would obtain those results? Is that clear enough in that research question? And then the finer criteria too, that it's feasible, interesting, novel, ethical, and relevant. So those are things to try to make sure that it's included. Just Jody? a quick point on these. This PICO is really important to think about for your introduction. These are good things to include in your introduction. This finer criteria are important things to think about as part of your justification. If you're applying for research funding, why am I going to support you? also important to put in your introduction, depending on discipline, but nevertheless. So these things can mm -hmm. really work to introduce your topic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so things like feasibility. If you, at, at some point early on, you may be writing it in the form of a proposal. So if you write up, an ex write up a description of your, of your experiment and your major research question that you want to answer, and there's no possible way that you could do it. There's no possible way that you could get access to that population group, or there's no possible way that you could, you know, do the manipulation that's needed, the intervention that's needed to do it. It's not going to work. So you have to think about being realistic, um, et cetera. You know, interesting. You know, kind of, again, you, if you've justified it in your problem area that it is a problem and it does need to be solved, and there's a reason, that's part of what's going to make it interesting. Okay. Um, so words and expressions you might think about in terms of refining, including things about although, because, even though, given that. So ways that you can allow the reader to know that, okay, because we know this, because we don't know this, we need to know this. Um, ways that you can sort of compare. Uh, or we know that, or it is uncertain, it is clear that. So those are kinds of wording that are going to end up coming up in your, in your introduction as you lead to your research question and maybe a part of your research question itself. So then they end up in this project with the piglets, a, refine, a more refined research question that says, does early weaning of piglets reduce the non-immune innate protective capacity of the small intestinal apical alkaline phosphatase, so they've narrowed down further to a specific enzyme, uh, to the host via downregulation of IEP expression at multiple cellular and molecular levels. So this was a project, a PhD project done by somebody who works in our, um, in our unit, um, and that was the sort of the final refined research question that they ended up with. Okay, so you can take a minute at some point. I won't ask you to do it now because we're, uh, we're coming to the end of time. Um, but take a few minutes to look at what you've got so far and then say, okay, so how can I use PICO or Finer to kind of think about, you know, will my research question work? Can I add to it? Can I make it clearer? And that research question eventually will become what, what, uh, what part of your introduction do you usually recognize as existing in a uh, report or a thesis? What do you find at the end of the introduction? What kind of statement? Does anyone know what we often call it? Purpose statement? Has anyone heard that expression? So usually your research question, you know, what are the effects of blah, blah, blah on blah, blah, blah? <coughs> That's your question. In your introduction, you can then turn it into a purpose statement. The purpose of this project was to determine the effects of blah, blah, blah on blah, blah, blah. So you turn your question into a purpose statement with all the details. And sometimes it can be you know, fairly long because it includes 
the population, the intervention, the comparisons, the outcome uh, indicated in there. Okay, so questions then on that aspect of, of research questions. I just want to say one of the things I think is important to remember about your research question, like any of your research, is it's dynamic. It will always be changing. So always go back and revisit, is my research question still applicable? Is it still focused enough? Do I need to narrow it now that I know more about X? So don't get fixed on this, this one question. It might evolve as you continue in your research. So always be checking with your supervisor does this seem realistic? Is this feasible? Is this a good question? Mm -hmm. And it gives you something then as a basis for maybe early discussions with your uh, supervisor to say, this is what I was thinking my project might be. Is that, does this work? Does this fit with you? Your advisor can help you to maybe narrow it, broaden it, you know, focus it in different directions. But it gives you something concrete that you can go in with that's written down that you can say you can talk about it can form as a, as a basis of talking and we'll talk this afternoon that it also then allows you to start your work on your literature review so having that research question in mind at least as a as a draft or a starting point gives you a place to go for the rest of your thesis